Hello, I'm Joan Stoffer with Iridex Corporation here at the American Academy of Ophthalmology. It's Iridex's last day of our three-day physician speakers program celebrating 20 years of our Micropulse technology. I'm here with Dr. Sean Lin, Director of Glaucoma Service at UCSF. Dr. Lin, thank you for being here and spending a few minutes with me. Happy to do so. So can you briefly explain how micropulse transcleral cyclophotocoagulation is different than continuous wave transcleral cyclophotocoagulation? Well, with micropulse technology, you take that energy that you need to deliver to get your effect, and you break it into basically packets with relaxation times in between, and separating out that energy allows for the effect but without having the thermal damage to the tissues and the associated side effects. So what we're seeing with Micropulse is that clinically we're having less complications than with the traditional laser. Where does the Cyclo G6 fit into your treatment regimen for your glaucoma patients? Well, I'll just start off by saying the Cyclo G6, the Micropulse has had a tremendous effect on my practice. It's really now the number one glaucoma surgery I do. Whereas before, did plenty of trabeculectomies, plenty of tube surgeries, and, and have done a lot of MIGs, continue to do some MIGs as well, but really it's become my first go-to procedure because of its safety profile. So being that it, it has an excellent safety profile with very low risk for things like hypotony or tysis, uh, it's really become sort of my first thing after patients are refractory to medical treatment. What are the expectations that you set for your patients with this treatment? I think this is really important for doctors who are starting off with the uh, micropulses. You have to set the right expectations, and anybody who does glaucoma surgery has to tell their patients to you know, have the right expectations. Uh, it's not going to work in everybody, just like any other glaucoma procedure. You're going to have some that it doesn't work in. Uh, in my hands, our, our studies show that we have a 68% success rate, success being 20% IOP reduction or greater. And so I would tell my patients that if you're the two-thirds and you have a significant IOP reduction, that's great, but there is about a third that the pressure doesn't change very much. But thankfully, it's a very safe procedure, so overall, you know, if it was me, I'd probably rather start off with this as a procedure to try to lower your intraocular pressure. And finally, Dr. Lin, can you share a little bit about the study that you presented here at the booth today? Yes, we've, uh, I've treated probably about 100 to 150 patients already since it's been introduced two and a half years ago. And what we did was we uh, did a prospective study where we said we're going to follow these people. And some of them we also scanned with certain instruments, uh, the UBM, the anterior segment OCT, to see if there's any thermal damage to the area as well as just what the mechanism might be. But as we follow these patients prospectively, we, we currently have uh, over 50 that we have with at least six months follow-up. When we looked at that data, the success rate was 68% in terms of people who had uh, IOP lowering of 20% or greater. We didn't have any significant side effects. Uh, one patient had transient hypotony, which meant that their pressure went down below five on medications, on glaucoma medications. And once we stopped those, the pressure came into the teens, which in a way is a success. And so that person's doing well, same visual acuity as after laser as before laser. So our safety profile has been really good. Thank you. You're welcome.